morning. Last night I made it, um, I think I probably knocked out about 600 miles, something like that. Probably not quite that, about 590 miles, we'll say, whatever. But I uh, found myself here, holy cow, this beard is wild right now. I found myself um, well into Kentucky, so uh, Louisville, Kentucky area. And I uh, just kind of set up here at this uh, 4-H um, fairground kind of looking place. Uh, I got here about midnight, so I rode until, you know, late, if you will. And um, picnic benches at places like this, these little pavilions and stuff, they've been, well, they've suited me really well over the <laughs> last couple years just riding. Um, it's one of those places I look for. It's kind of off the beaten path. I drove around the parking lot really good and there's one house way over on the other side of that building that you see there and I'm thinking that they're associated with this place in some way but I took my time I rode around and uh, just made sure that they knew that the, there was somebody over here but I did not get to ask permission which is something I'm not crazy about but um, nonetheless I stayed but I'm out here in the open. It's not like I was hiding. So if they wanted to talk to me, I would have welcomed it. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Like you stay out here at these places, you 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 learn to embrace the unknown a little bit, and it's kind of the adventure of it too. Um, it's possible somebody could have come over and talked to me. And that would have been fine. I would have been okay with that, and I would have dealt with it. It's no problem. Um, and I've never been run off yet. I have yet to ever be run off so don't be afraid to get out there and you know be good to the places where you stay but be polite and don't be afraid but this morning I'm just packing up I'm getting ready to roll out and first stop this morning is gonna be Denny's because you know I like Denny's so I went through my bag here last night setting up my camp and I realized I forgot something kind of critical my toothbrush yeah so I'm glad that we're communicating like this you know so at some time today I'm gonna stop at a Dollar General and just pick up a tube of tooth uh, toothpaste and a toothbrush guys I'm gonna spend most of the day today on the road I'm looking at probably about a 10 to 12 hour day till I arrive in Eureka Springs spring fling I'll see you when I see you so I stopped here and I'm just checking out the little shops here at this uh, this known tourist trap. I'm sure that uh, most of you guys have been past this place at least one time. I think this is my third time going by and a little bit of rain kind of situation. Clouds are getting heavy and stuff so I thought well if I have to hold up somewhere for a little bit let's let's be entertained while we're doing it. So I pulled in here I'm definitely gonna go check out the fudge and uh, I'm gonna look at everything. But welcome to Uranus. So the sword swallowing young lady, she told me that there's a heavy storm that's actually developed right now just west of me. So I, I was right to stop, man. It looks like uh, they're going to get pounded here for the next hour or so. So I'm going to hang out here. I'm going to get some food and I'm going to show you guys around. Welcome to Uranus! Figure I might as well get a dog while I'm here. Probably still have another half hour, 45 minutes to burn, so I'm going to get a dog and then I'm going to go get some fudge because how can you come here and not get some fudge, right? But first things first, cheers. Mm. Red's not as fancy as Chicago. <laughs> it's still really good. I ain't messing with him. I saw what he did to Tom Hanks. Push. Push. So the shop is packed. 
<laughs> and I, I, I say that when I'm joking because she goes, can I pack your fudge for you? Of course. She packed it in a nice box for me. I'm going to take that down to Eureka with me, maybe share with some pals. But they are full of puns here. Thank you folks for picking Uranus today. Just be careful pulling out though. It's a little slippery. Springs, Spring Fling, that's in Arkansas in case you didn't know. Just had breakfast at the Main Street Cafe here with uh, those guys. Today we're rolling and we're going to do a little bit of a ride just for fun. We're going to go see uh, some uh, Golden Gate Bridge of Arkansas and um, anyways it's just like a scoot around. I got a sunburned schnoz but I got sunblock on it today. But that's the plan. I don't know what it's gonna be, but let's roll. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> that's a cool little bridge. Thank you. Is that my jacket or is that? So from here, we're just kind of rolling around. We really, uh, th there's no real agenda except for one. They're having a ladies day, uh, ladies ride day or something like that here in a few weeks. And this is the route the ladies are gonna take. So they want to just uh, preview it, make sure there's nothing that they haven't thought of. Let's go inside. This is, uh, this is Pig Trail, Harley Davidson. Let's go in and just have a look around. Something I love to do when I come to the dealerships is ask somebody for the, the oldest Harley in the dealership. So let's see if we can track someone down and find the oldest Harley in the dealership. All right, so these two young ladies are going to help me out. The oldest Harley here at the dealership. Where is the oldest Harley? They're going to be upstairs. Will you show me? Yeah. All right, let's do it. So it's a 32 Harley Davidson RL Sport Solo. Let's go. And bring up that spec sheet, would you? You betcha. Surround, so take a looky loo. There's your specs. Well, I know there's somebody on here who's going to be interested in that. 19 horsepower. Oh, a whole 19? Three speed. 390 pounds, top speed 70 to 75. That was, that was moving. I'm going to go up and kind of look around the museum up here. We'll see what the other older bikes are. And of course, you guys can see the, the line of all the new ones behind me. Those are easy to find. But let's go see some of the relics that are upstairs. It's kind of cool. They have a whole area up here that's set up for lounging, hanging out with the boys. We've got massage chairs. Massage chairs, really? But here's what we came up to see. A couple old bikes here. So we got our flathead right here. Shovel head. I don't know the years on them, but maybe you guys do. And of course, the duo glide back here, the old pan head. You guys know. That's where my heart is. <laughs> Did you guys see the top speed on that thing? Supposed to be 70 miles per hour. Can you imagine doing 70 on this little scooter? sitting up that high taking all that wind in the face i don't see it but this is a great ride and run and bike it is an everyday rider you can come pick it up and uh you know you could be enjoying the highway on an epic piece of americana history just a fuel stop that's all a couple folks inside grabbing what they want to grab and tanks topped off it looks like we're just going to have about 30 miles we're going to ride yet after this. And I'm only going to pull this out when we stop somewhere notable. It actually talks about how it was built and it got burnt down by the Confederate Army and rebuilt and then another fire happened it doesn't say why and uh, 
Do I rebuild again? So it has a history of being destroyed and resurrected. It's kind of cool. It still stands today. And a little bit of a toyish, tourist trap, but still cool. I like the, the water wheel. And that's where they kept the vending machines in 1823. But we got back into Eureka Springs and it was a great ride. I think that Mike did a great job putting this one together for International Women's Riding Day. What is that? What's it called? International Women's Ride Day? Yeah, something like that. This was just like a test run and it was incredible. It really was. It was a wonderful, well thought out, good stops, good swervies and you know, back through dark pine, fresh air forests, you know. And uh, it went to the Arkansas uh, Golden Gate Bridge and just the cool stops along the way were right on time. So good run. I need an oil change. I'm overdue. Found this place here at Chopper Town, USA, and it's just a cool little Harley shop. And uh, well, he does uh, what? Motorcycle maintenance, all that stuff that's on the sign. But he had the exact oil that I wanted. And I'm going to run up to Napa, get some stabilizer and add to it. But, anyways, oil change today. And that'll get me uh, going for the rest of the trip. So it's kind of cool. I get to hang out here at Chopper Town, USA, with the one and only Saddle Tram and the missus. How lucky am I? I just lost all power. That bike is dead right now. Holy cow. So I'm going up this hill, this incline that's behind us, and no power to the rear tire. Just complete dropout. That is a dead bike. I have roadside, so uh, somebody's coming to pick me up right now. A tow truck's gonna load it up and we're gonna take it up to Pig Trail. Harley Davidson, I already called them, they're expecting me. The great question is though, can I keep rolling? Can I still get home? I have charters next week. I got a buddy that wants to go fishing. I gotta be back in Pennsylvania. And right now I'm over a thousand miles from there. Oh, the old girl let me down today, but. We're gonna get it taken care of on our way to Pig Trail Harley Davidson, guys. Welcome back. <laughs> the next adventure starts. <laughs> so yesterday, Saddle Tramp and I had the primary off on that. We thought it was uh, the compensator. It's up there, thought it was something with that. So we got in there, we just tightened the bolt down, but I don't think it was that. We, we, we worked on it a little bit and we kind of cumulatively decided, cumulatively, boy, that's a tough one for me. <laughs> Together we decided that it probably wasn't the compensator bolt itself, but maybe the springs, the plates that are behind it. And I don't know too much about that. Ultimately, the old girl's not going anywhere without towing assistance and I'm gonna have to see a mechanic. So I'm not crazy about it, but that's just what happens. That's just what has to happen. There's a local shop. He's gonna stop by next week, pick it up and do the clutch basket and uh, compensator and such. Just a local shop up here, not Pig Trail. Um, they actually suggested <laughs> the other place. You guys understand why. But Pig Trail was awesome to me. We're on our way to the airport for now. <laughs> what a ride. So we made it down to Arkansas on a Harley and we're going back in a RAV. A RAV, that's what she had. So that's how we're getting back to Pennsylvania. I don't think there's much adventure left after this. It's just gonna be four wheeler fun. I'm gonna get in this vehicle, hit the cruise control and take a nap and <laughs> wake up in Pennsylvania. I made it to Pennsylvania. I am dropping this guy off at the airport here. So. In just a couple weeks, it'll be about two or three weeks. Kind of depends on uh, you know how the shop does with my bike. I'm going to be doing the same thing, just going straight back down. But that's it for this this video, guys. Thanks for having me along, uh, for coming along with me, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Much love and much respect. Later, guys. That's my ride out there. Uh, are we closed? They're closed. Gonna do the after.